Hey everybody, I've had a bunch of people ask me about Photo Mechanic because I know I mention it in a lot of posts. Uh, so I thought I would go ahead and cover it. I've got a little bit of time here. So um, the first thing that I want to do is just kind of explain what it is and why you would want to use it. So basically with Photo Mechanic, um, it will allow you to easily cull through all of your images and it seriously has cut my um, my post-processing time in half. Um, so uh, what a lot of people do uh, when they have Lightroom is they'll use Lightroom to cull through their images. And I'm going to show you why I don't really feel like that's a great idea, at least for my business. Um, so when we're here in Lightroom, and hopefully it's not too slow because I'm working on exporting uh, this wedding right now. Um, but when you're in Lightroom, what you would do to import the photos uh, is you would click on the import button and um, the, the memory card that you have plugged in would show up. So all of your photos here. Um, so they're all, you know, they're all in here. Um, but then you, if you clicked on them, the rendering time, see I already hit the next button and it still, it won't go. The rendering time um, is pretty slow sometimes. Yeah, so it doesn't, um, it's not showing me the um, the photo in the full resolution and then it's harder to make um, snap judgments. So right there it was going pretty fast but that's because I've already um, looked through these photos so let's, let's try some of these here. It would start working really nicely when I'm showing you exactly how it doesn't work <laughs> but I am I'm pressing the next button um, and it's taking quite a while for them to show up uh, whereas you'll see with Photo Mechanic, you can just go through really, really fast. Um, so I'm going to close this down, but this is in Lightroom. If you were to import them, um, it just it takes a little bit longer to render the photos. So let's go back here. Um, I have my memory card plugged in right down here. So what I do first when I get home from a wedding, the absolute very first thing that I'll do uh, is I'll plug in the memory cards. And so I have all of the photos right in here. Uh, this is only one memory card. I shoot on um, 164 gigabyte card the whole time and then multiple 16 gigs. And I did a post on that. I'll, I'll link to that at the bottom of this post. Um, but anyway, this is just one of the cards that I shot with. So I'll take all of the photos in here and I'll make a new folder um, on the desktop. I keep all of my wedding photos, every single photo I take, even the the ones that are, you know, completely dark, uh, blurry, whatever, you know, whatever the picture looks like, I'll keep it for six months. And I have that in another folder on an external hard drive. So, <clears throat> excuse me, um, after six months, I'll delete those photos. But I want to make sure that if for some crazy reason, you know, I were to uh, miss something uh, when I'm sending the gallery to the clients, I want to be able to have that to go back on. Also, um, my cloud storage will uh, back that up for me as well. So it's just always good to have your photos in as many places as possible. And I feel like that's one good way to do that. So I'm not going to actually drag them all over because that would take forever. But what I would do, uh, this was Ermin and Lara's wedding from Saturday. So I would do Ermin and Lara um, to delete. Um, so I already have another folder like that. Um, but then I would just copy all of the photos and drag them over. Um, but like I said, I'm not actually going to do that. So uh, once all of those photos are safely on the desktop, um, I'm, I'll show you what I do with Photo Mechanic. And <clears throat> some people choose to use Photo Mechanic. Um, they edit the pictures from a folder like this, or they, I'm sorry, not edit, they call the, the photos from the, um, the, uh, I'm losing my words here. They call the photos from the folder that they just put the photos into, or they'll call from the memory card. And it really kind of depends for me, uh, but typically I'll call from the memory card. And something that you really need to understand with Photo Mechanic that I didn't get when I first got it is Photo Mechanic does not 
store photos at all. Uh, so if you've used anything like, I believe, Bridge, the Adobe Bridge program, um, or iPhoto that Apple used to have, if you use something like that to cull your photos, that stores your photos, just like Lightroom does. Uh, but Photo Mechanic doesn't do that at all. And at first I didn't, I wasn't quite sure how I felt about that, but now it is such a great thing. Um, so one of my friends, Megan, actually told me this about the, about Photo Mechanic, and it really stuck with me. It made a lot of sense. So uh, if you have a Mac, just think of Photo Mechanic like a glorified finder window. Um, so something like this, where, you know, if you click on a photo, it'll show up in the preview window. Uh, really, it, it doesn't store anything. It's just there to show you what the image looks like. And Photo Mechanic just renders the photos absolutely instantly, and it gives you an easier way to sort the photos. Um, so if I were to click on one of these pictures here, it would try to open in Photoshop or you know some other program because it's a raw file and not a JPEG or a PNG. Um, so I'm not even going to try and click on it because it just it would take forever to open and then it would slow my computer way down. So we're just we're not even going to deal with that. Um, so anyway, I'm going to close this down, um, delete this because I don't have anything in there. Um, and so for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to edit directly from the memory card. So this is the Photo Mechanic um, app right down here. So to open it, you would right click and it'll show you uh, recents that you've, um, recent folders that you've culled from. And if you haven't done anything yet, all you have to do to open it is drag, um, drag something over to, uh, to the Photo Mechanic um, section. So when you also plug in your memory card, something will probably sh uh, show up, and I don't think it'll show up now because it's been plugged in for a little bit. Um, and it just asks you what you want to do with the photos, where you want them to be stored. Um, it's like a little gray box, and I <clears throat> I just never do anything with it. I just hit the close button immediately, and I'm sure other people have a great use for it, but I've just never, uh, never done anything with it. Um, so this is Photo Mechanic here. Uh, so like I said, it's really just kind of a glorified finder window. So this is your navigator over here, um, and it shows you uh, the different um, folders that you have. So here is my memory card over here. So I have the, the different folders here. So this is the folder that the photos are stored on. Um, but say I wanted to go to my external hard drive. I could click over here, photos, um, uh, go through all my files until I find something here, like let's do Josh and Maggie's engagement session, and so you click on it, and then it opens all of the photos. Um, so there you go, a little peek at my organizing over here. <laughs> um, so this, it really, with Photo Mechanic, just the most important thing to understand about it is that it renders files instantly, and it is, you don't even understand how helpful it is. So uh, we'll close this out. Um, so we're back here, we'll go down to some bride and groom portraits. Um, so it just shows you all of the, the pictures, and I am definitely no expert on photo mechanic, but I'm just going to show you exactly what I do whenever I have a session or um, a wedding. So we'll, we'll just start right here. Um, so you click on double click on a photo, and it brings it up nice and big, and I typically get rid of this thing because I don't need it. Um, but I'll just show you how quickly you can go through. I mean, it just, it renders absolutely immediately. There's no... There's no wait time, no fuzziness, there, it's not blurry at all, well, except for that one, because that was actually a blurry photo. <laughs> um, but it just goes by super, super fast, um, which is perfect. That's exactly what, what it should be doing. Uh, so let's go back up here. Let's see. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll start at the beginning of my memory card. And for me, culling just has to be a split-second decision. I can't spend too much time thinking about it because if I, you know, go back and forth between two pictures, like, oh, do I like this one or this one or this one or this one, which one? Um, I'm just going to be there, you know, for forever. So it's, you know, maybe you do need to spend a little bit more time on uh, looking through your pictures. But for me, it's just I've gotten to the point where it's very instantaneous. I know exactly which one I want, um, and I go with it, and I just don't even think twice about it. Um, so I'll go through and I'll just really quickly, um, give them a rating. So with, on your keyboard, the one, two, three, four, five, um, you can give a, a rating, but it's, um, it's actually color coded, which is super nice. So I always give the photos that I want to keep 
a five star rating, which is a green, um, a green label. So right down here, it's green. Um, but four is yellow, three is orange, two is red, and one is pink or purple or whatever. But it, I mean, it really doesn't matter what you do because, like I said, this doesn't store your photos. And um, the one unfortunate thing that I've run into is sometimes. Uh, this has only happened to me maybe once or twice, um, but sometimes uh, if your computer shuts down, it won't save the ratings. Um, like if you were in Lightroom and you um, were to rate a photo with a five star rating and then it shut down on you, that rating would still be there when you got back. But if your memory card accidentally gets ejected while you're working on it, um, then all of the, uh, the calling that you had done also, uh, the the ratings, they get, I guess, ejected too, and so then you have to, you would have to go through and redo it. Now, that's only happened to me once where I had to go back and recall. Thankfully, it wasn't a wedding because that would have been a nightmare. Um, but then it also happened to me again a couple weeks ago. Um, but then when I plugged it back in, all of the, the color labels were still there. So, that's just one thing to think about, uh, but it really hasn't been that big of a problem for me um, and sometimes it doesn't delete the labels so who knows what's up with that but anyway um, I've just gotten used to I've been doing it for so long I just always give it a far, five star label but doesn't matter whatever you want to do so I would I would start at the beginning and I would go through and I would just really quickly be like okay I want this one and then um, so I'll say this you know sometimes I'll see this photo and be like ooh I really like that one and then I'll go to the next one and be like oh but you like that one even better and they're so similar that I don't want to keep them both um, so if something like that were to happen it's just really easy with the arrow keys you um, so we'll give these both zeros okay so I would say ooh I like this one and give it a five go to this one and say oh I like that even better so I give that one a five, go back, and then you just hit zero, and then that label is gone. Um, so I would just go through really fast, um, and sorry, it may be hard for me to talk and uh, do both at the same time, um, but it's just, it's gotten really easy for me to go through um, really, really quickly and just know exactly what I want, and so I'll go back and forth, and I know it's kind of hard because you can't see my fingers, how they're moving, but I do, um, I do go back and forth a little bit, so I'll go forward and I'll say, ooh, I like that one, and then, um, the one right before it I like even better, and so I'll go right back to it, um, but it is, it's just a very, very quick process, um, and it's so much better than anything that I had ever used before, um, that one's a little fuzzy, um, so I've already called through all of these, so I've seen them all before, um, but, so this is just kind of a, a little, um, a little taste of what it's like and how, how quick and easy it is to go through and, um, and cull through all of these photos. So then what you would do, that was just, you know, a very, very small selection. So, um, if you exit out down here, then, um, so you have, you can see all of the pictures and then the ones that have the, the green label on it. Um, I know some people that, do uh, they would do like maybe a a green label for something they wanted to put on the blog um, and then uh, all of the other ones they would do um, some other kind of label or something else everybody has a different way to do it I think it's best if you kind of figure it out for yourself and know know what it is that you want um, because everybody's you know ev the way people do it it's also different but for me all I need out of Photo Mechanic is a way to go through all of the photos and eliminate the ones that are blurry or the ones that are dark or the ones that are blown out, um, you know, non-salvageable. So that's really all I use Photo Mechanic for, but I know that it can be used for even more in-depth calling. Um, so that would be something to look into if you really want it for that as well. Uh, when I'm going through and selecting the ones that I want for the blog, like I'll show you here, these are all of the photos from the wedding, so it's like it's, uh, 1120 um, photos, but then I'll go through and add a five star rating to the ones I want to blog, so go up here to attribute, so the five stars. Um, so these would be, you know, the favorites that I have. So that's how I go through um, and recall later, so I don't do that in Photo Mechanic, but I know a lot of people do. So anyway, that was a little rabbit trail, sorry. <laughs> so once you've finished, you've gone through the whole the whole wedding and you have all of the labels that you want, um, all you have to do is that all these uh, little colors down here, 
um, there's this one beside the gray one, and it's kind of hard to see, but it says hide color class none. Um, so really, what this little bar is doing is hiding the other labels. So let's say I had keyworded most of them green, but then a couple of them yellow. Um, I could hit the yellow button and all of the ones that I uh, keyworded with the yellow label would then disappear. And you would just click on it again to get them back. Um, so what I want to do, my goal with this, is to get rid of all of the photos that don't have a label at all. Uh, which is why I'll click on the little, it's got like little black dots on it, the hide color class, none. So once you click on that, all of the photos that you have given the label to show up uh, right here. So that makes it super, super easy uh, to find all of the photos that you want. Um, so of course there's typically a lot more than this, but this is just for <laughs> demonstrations purpose. Um, so once I have all of the photos here, what I would do is I would go over to the desktop and I would make a new folder. Um, so this would be Ermin and Lara um, to edit. Oops, there we go. Okay, so once I have that folder, I would select all of these, Command A, and I would drag them all over um, and put them in here. And I'm not actually, I'm not actually going to do that because it would take time to slow my computer down. Um, but let's just say that I, I have moved them over there. Um, so then I would drag this folder. I have a move to external folder, um, and this is where all of my Lightroom photos are sourced from because you know if you were to move a folder um, while it's in Lightroom then it would show up as the file can't be found and I don't want to have to deal with that so once a month I start a new folder the move to external folder um, and all of my months uh, raw files are in there and then at the end of the month I move them over to an external hard drive so that's just it works easier for me to do that so over here are my uh, April external uh, raw files. So I have, let's see, where did it go? Here are the uh, Ermin and Lara to edit photos. So all of these are the the raw files that I want to edit from, but um, I still have all of the photos from all of the memory cards, even the the dark ones, like, like I had said earlier. Um, so once that folder is in my external uh, folder, then I would go into Lightroom and um, go to the import panel. Uh, so the memory card's still showing up, even though I don't want it to because it's still plugged in. Uh, so I would go to the folder on my desktop, then move to external, and find the folder. And so here's the Ermin and Lara to edit. Uh, so all of the photos that I want to edit uh, would show up, but I've already imported them all, of course. Uh, so they'll show up grayed out. Um, but yeah, so that's what I would do, and then I would hit the import button, and they would all be in there. But then they're all cold, um, and there's really nothing else to do but rearrange them and keyword them and edit them um, and then export them. But that's how uh, Photo Mechanic works, and I hope that helped you guys because this has been one of the best tools that I've ever bought. Um, and I don't remember how much it is, uh, but I'll post a link definitely to... Uh, where you can find it and I mean I would really suggest any photographer to buy this because it has saved my life so many times it's just so fast um, and if you can really get into that mindset of going through quickly and just making really quick decisions um, it kind of becomes almost like a mindless thing where you're you're thinking but you know what you need and so you're able to get in and get out and get the job done really quickly um, and then it's not like in Lightroom where it just takes a little bit to load and you can't really quickly switch between the photos. Um, so that's just how I use Photo Mechanic. Um, I really hope this was helpful for you guys. Uh, leave me a comment if it was and uh, let me know if you do get this, uh, if you do get Photo Mechanic because I really want to know. Uh, also let me know if you have any other questions about Photo Mechanic, anything that I didn't cover. Um, I know there's a lot of ways that you can use Photo Mechanic. Um, even better ways, you know, than, than I'm using it. I know it can be used for lots of other things, but this is just how I have used it. It's really the only, the only way that, um, that I use it, and it's just been super helpful for me. So I thought if it was helpful for me, it may be helpful for some of you guys. Okay, well, I'm going to sign off now, and I hope it was helpful, so leave me a comment. Bye!